I'm Jeff Fritz with Soundstage.com, and I'm joined today by Ansi Huvenen, the proprietor of Amphi and Loudspeakers in Finland. Ansi, how are you today? Everything is fine here in Finland. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. So I was cruising the Amphian website last night, and right on the front page, it split right down the center with professional loudspeakers on one side and consumer hi-fi products on the other side. And so my first question for you is, tell us a little bit about how that split works and what are the difference between the professional and the consumer loudspeakers? Well, it's a windy world out there, so it, it's, a, it's actually a good thing to have two feet to stand on. Um, also, as even if we started from the home side well over 20 years ago, we never felt that we are particularly a hi-fi company. Our aim was always to open a large, clean window into music, and we've had customers using our hi-fi products in the studios from pretty much day one. So, so it was pretty natural to to kind of go in that direction about was it seven years ago now. Okay. And so what are the technical differences between a, a professional loudspeaker and a consumer loudspeaker? Are they, are they similar in design? I noticed the waveguide is, is, is present on all Amphi and loudspeakers, including these. But what are some of the differences between the actual loudspeakers? Well, of course, we, we have our particular beliefs in, in what's correct and, and what's not. So, of course, you kind of have to apply that to everything you make. Um, you, even if the products on the home and the pro side, they share a lot of their DNA, of course, you have to keep in mind the environment of, on, on where the speakers are used and how they are used. I would say the biggest difference is uh, listening distances. They tend to be a little bit shorter on the pro side. Also, there um, you really need to hear everything what's happening in the recording. And, and on the other hand, even if you want to be honest to the recording or also on the hi-fi side, maybe there are cases where you don't need to hear all the warts and, and, and dimples in your favorite recording, which was made 30 years ago. So what I hear you saying, basically the, the technologies and the overall design is very similar, but there's some what would you could you characterize it as some voicing differences perhaps yeah, a lot, yes a lot of the lot of the character of the of the speaker of course comes from fi from the final voicing i mean if we're looking at dispersions crossovers things like this i believe they need to be a certain way in any product uh, regardless of how it's it's getting used because of course we're never listening to the direct sound only we're always listening to the some of reflections and the direct sound, regardless of the space where we are. It, it, same is in untreated living room at home or treated studio space. You still have the whole, whole spectrum, so to say. But yes, those final, final, uh, small, relatively small differences. They, I, we feel they need to be there because on the, on the home side you're looking for enjoyment. On the professional side you're looking for something they call translation, which means that do they hear what the end customer hears regardless of the playback device they use. Okay. One other question that I had about the, the actual design of the loudspeakers, I've noticed through the years that Amphion, you know, you guys make some fairly large floor standards. I think the Krypton is one, if I'm not mistaken. But you guys have really found a niche in smaller loudspeakers, including some very slender floor standards, but, but quite a few stand-mounted loudspeakers. Is, is there a particular, uh, has there been a particular focus or what would you attribute the knack for Amphi in creating smaller loudspeakers that have been so successful? Um, I'm not sure if there's anything technical in, I mean, I, I believe we apply the same kind of set of rules to all the products we make, but maybe because we never wanted to cater only for the audiophiles. We always felt that good sound in general is something that should be everybody to enjoy. And, and, and therefore, we've always had a lot of customers who might call normal people uh, and not only the audiophiles. And of course, when you are in that kind of environment, uh, other aspects uh, also play a part. I mean, you may have when you're choosing something for the whole family, 
normally if wife is involved also and they do have a little bit different let's say aesthetic view on on what a good loudspeaker is compared to a to a guy who may like it massive and shiny um, often women like it like that it blends to be part of the environment and, and interior so so maybe that's the reason why um, there are a lot of the smaller smaller things because uh, that's kind of where the normal market is in a way yeah yeah so has there been any crossover have you had any and this is just a curiosity question but have you had any audiophiles that have preferred or have bought the professional products for personal use has that happened sure it's happening all the time i mean uh, and and there's no reason why it shouldn't happen because it's not as i said uh, even if they are made for the professional environment, there's nothing, let's say, in a stereotypical way, monitor, monitorish about them. They are not aggressive and annoying to listen to. They, they just show exactly what's in the recording. And in the same way as most of those um, high quality red rim Canon lenses, they don't go to to professional use, they actually go to to uh, to to dedicated hobbyists. The same way, we have a lot of customers who are actually uh, going for the pro product. Also, uh, I mean, I'm one of them. I since I was 14, I wanted to hear what the mastering engineer hears. And of course, now we have the wonderful opportunity that we can actually stream the masters. We have exactly the same file what the what they actually made in mastering. Uh, we can buy the same gear, the same speakers. The only thing which we don't, of course, have access to is their rooms. But if you do a product like we do it and you make sure that it works in a predictable manner in all acoustics, you actually get very, very close. So, yes, definitely there are a lot of people who, who, who uh, especially those who feel that they want to hear exactly what is in the recording day. There's no, no reason why they couldn't look into that, 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 that direction as well. Now, one other question about the, the difference between the professional and the consumer lines. There are some aesthetic differences, correct? Just in the finishes sure. uh, as well. And, and, you know, obviously, you know, maybe you don't need a really fancy finish in a studio. You need something a little bit more utilitarian. Uh, but are, are, there, are there pretty dramatic differences between the finishes of the two products? In, in a way, yes, because of course the, the professional, uh, the only decision regarding the professional uh, monitors is that which model to choose. You don't have to worry about the, the finish because they only come in one, one, one finish, the black box with the white, white waveguide. On the other hand, um, this is uh, on the home side, yes, we have a lot of different, if different options. Uh, I think there are currently eight, nine different color grids. We have white, we have black, we have warm, and so on, and of course all the multiples of that. So, so naturally the, the, the aesthetic side is more important in a home uh, and, and that's where, where the customer gets more choice okay. over there. So Ansi, the, the last question that I have for you today, I know that uh, Amphi and loudspeakers are in studios uh, across the world, I've seen photos and, and spoken to you in the in in the past about that. So I would like to hear a favorite l recent listening experience or two. Have you had any opportunity to hear Amphi and loudspeakers in some unique uh, places or environments or studios? What 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 can you tell me about uh, the last few months as far as your listening experiences? Well, of course the the past couple of months, uh, obviously the, the uh, experiences in studios have been a little bit limited, but naturally I'm, I'm blessed in a way that I get to hear um, some of the best studios and, and, and especially what's important and I think what separates Amphian from a lot of the other companies is that we actually get access to listening to these masters in those rooms they are mastered. And that, of course, remembering that the final voicing is where, where the speaker gets a lot of the character. We don't have to fumble in the dark when we do the final voicing in various rooms. We actually have an aim to go for. But on a personal level, I must say that um, the recent 
let's say, moment of joy was when I listened to Billie Eilish's new single, My Future, uh, a few, few days ago only when it came out. And of course, this is a little bit special thing because um, she is very talented, young songwriter who's managed to actually carve a niche has a style of her own, is working with the brother, doing what they what they really love doing. Um, uh, of course, the fact that Phineas O'Connell, uh, after chose Amphion to actually record and and mix that or, or record and, and produce that particular song in her, in his new studio, and Rob Kinelski, uh, the Grammy winning winning uh, mixing engineer mixed it with, a, with also Amphi, and of course it makes it a little bit special. But I think what's nicer is that, that uh, we, sh I mean, she's actually become kind of the new Dire Straits also in the hi-fi shows, which is kind of nice because you wouldn't expect that kind of music to also be used with a little bit older population like myself. But uh, yeah, I, I do like it, and it's, it's really cool to to have a little part in, 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 in the creation process, at least in, in, in providing the tools for these very, very dedicated and, and, uh, and talented people. Well, you know, I can only imagine the satisfaction that that gives you as the proprietor of Amphion to have your speakers used in a, in a way like that. That's, that's, it's obviously super cool, but, but I also can imagine that it really is a tremendous tool for you guys to be able to, you know, have uh, access to those master tapes, those master files, as it would be, and to to use those in the development of your loudspeakers, that's something that not every loudspeaker company can say by a long shot. So I would imagine that's a that's a that's a pretty good advantage for Amphion. It is, and of course, the nice thing is that particular song is you can actually access the master through Title, which is of course for a very reasonable amount of money, it's, it's available for everybody. So in that sense, it's really, it works so nicely in, in, in so many ways. And, and of course, the small little music enthusiast must, like myself, it, it's, it's a great, it's a great, uh, the best thing is in a way is to, to realize your dream, which I have not now, now done. I get to hear what the mastering engineer hears. But even better is that you can share it with the world because you get very close to actually listening to these things through a, a certain pair of speakers in your own living room. Well, Ansi, thank you so much for the, the interview today and filling us in on what Amphion has been up to and, and really giving us that contrast between uh, your two loudspeaker uh, divisions, if you will. And uh, I really appreciate you joining me today. It was a pleasure, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.